hello and welcome to this video where i'm talking about how i won a hundred and eighty thousand dollar scholarship to ubc vancouver okay first things first you all need to know who this is this is my teddy bear can't live without him his name's baloo like baloo the bear bat 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 <sighs> it's baloo the bear yeah that's it anyway the scholarship UBC, the University of British Columbia, has always been one of my topmost priorities as they have the best business school in the country and equally stellar arts and sciences faculty. And along with that, they are very generous when providing scholarships to students, irrespective of whether you're national or international. So if you are someone who has been able to maintain great grades throughout and have participated in activities beyond the classroom, you have a great chance at getting a scholarship of some sort. So whatever may be the outcome, at least just apply. Now, how do you really apply for the scholarship? So the good news is you do not have to go through any additional application process to be eligible for the scholarship. You just have to go through the regular UBC application, but submit it before the priority deadline, which is 15th of January. <laughs> worked for me was that I submitted my application on 14th of Jan and then I received my letter of acceptance into UBC on 29th March. However, at the end of the letter, it was stated that I have not received any scholarships at that time. But then again, on 8th April, I received another letter stating that I had won a scholarship of $180,000 combined. So now this $180,000 is combined of three scholarships. The first one is the IMES award, which is International Major Entrance Scholarship worth $80,000. Then the second one is the BCom award, which is the Bachelor of Commerce International Entrance Scholarship, again worth $80,000. And lastly, OIS award, which is Outstanding International Student, which is worth $20,000. So combine these three scholarships, I got a total scholarship of $180,000. Now a few things to keep in mind, this $180,000 is not given to me for sure, it is conditional. So I need to maintain an average of 75% annually in 24 credits to maintain this scholarship. The year I'm not able to maintain such conditions, I lose the scholarship immediately. Now let's talk about what got me the scholarship. Number one, essays. designated portal only for UBC applications. However, after that, they made a common portal called Education Planner BC, where you can go and fill out a common application and send it to all schools that you want to in British Columbia. So which is why the essays and the application process will differ from mine. I think right now you all are expected to write one essay, which is why you want to do this program and what interests you in the program that you want to do. But for us, we had to write 100 essays. Did I just say 100 essays? No, eight essays of 100 words each and four to five, 250 to 350 word essays. Today I'm gonna to read out one 250 word essay and 100 word essay. I know you all don't have the same essay topics. However, just to showcase what is it that the admission officers are really looking for in each applicant and what side of me was I trying to portray through these essays. So the first long essay is what is important to you and why some people like to sing some like to dance and others like to paint as for me i like to use my creativity to make others laugh and my weapon of choice for doing so is mimicry so when i was reviewing my application i noticed that my entire application had a lot of quantitative and numerical data. So they knew my grades, they knew what activities I had done beyond school. But nowhere in the application was my creativity being showcased. So I used this essay as an opportunity to portray just that. So this is an advice that I would want to give all of you applying to any university. Try to be as creative and try to portray a side of you that is really out of the box and that helps you stand out. Because the admission officers are going through thousands of applications every single day. You want yours to be something that they remember even by the end of the day. So continuing, I realized quite early on the perks which are largely overlooked, such as my aunt Mira's pronunciation of my mother's name Suman as Shuman, 
could make for quite an amusing performance by an observant mimic. All you needed was a dash of exaggeration, a gamut of facial expressions, some voice modulation, and of course, flair. So in this paragraph, I've tried to showcase that along with my creative side and a hobby, I also have a lot of characteristics and a lot of my skills which are put to use. So for instance, being observant, offer amusing and engaging a huge crowd. Again, showing my leadership skills or being able, and again, I was applying for business. So I need them to know that I can engage my customers when selling them a story. So this paragraph had a lot of characteristics put very strategically in just four sentences. So again, something you need to do, you have a limited number of words in any essay that you write. So try to be as strategic as possible. After that, what started as entertaining family and friends soon became a full-blown hobby. I progressively performed before larger audiences and expanded my repertoire to include well-known personalities. Every time I stepped onto stage, I was someone else. Sometimes I was a guffawing Uncle Hiren, sometimes a wailing Professor Shaw, and yet in some moments, I was myself. Not only did I enjoy expressing myself, but these experiences helped me learn as well. So you wanna show what was your part while doing this creative side? Like, was it just like sitting at home? Okay, I have this creative side. Or was it something that you have gone out there and explored and experienced? So this is where I showed how I have put it in use and how it helped me learn, which I'm discussing in the paragraph coming now. My interpersonal communication improved as I realized the importance of body language. A simple yes implies doubt when followed by raised eyebrows and agreement when accompanied by a smile. However, it's not only non-verbal cues. With the confidence and communication skills mimicry has bestowed upon me, I have become one of my school's most seasoned debaters. Again, you want to learn about what has your personal growth been so far? What is it that this any activity or any activity, any skill, hobby has taught you? And what have you improved on? So I wrote how it's taught me communication, how it's taught me nonverbal cues that even without talking, I am pretty confident. So this is something that mimicry has given me. Most importantly, though, I've learned the power of patience and resilience. When I'm struggling with getting an impersonation just right, focusing long enough helps me find the trick I have overlooked. A slight incline of the head, perhaps, to nail the act. So in this paragraph, I've tried to showcase my patience and resilience and it's something I feel like admission officers want to see in every candidate because obstacles are something that you will overcome throughout your life, in college, after college, in life, always. So you want to show them that you're not someone who's always going to brood in sadness and who are, who's always going to feel like, why me? Why am I going through this? They want someone who's resilient, who can get over all of this, who is adaptable, who's patient with situations and who's confident. So they just want someone who has faith in themselves, who does not brood, who is not sad and who can get through anything that they are challenged with in life. So that is something that you should keep in mind and try to portray somewhere in your application. Lastly, mimicking is important to me as ironically, it is mimicking others that has helped me find myself. So you want a punchline at the end. You want something that leaves the readers to think for a bit. Like you don't want them to be like, okay, yeah, whatever, mm, I love mimicking, this is who I am, done. So your first and last sentence really focus on them. You want them to really create an impact on the admission officers and make it as simple but crisp as possible. Um, so yeah, that was the end of the first essay. And with that, it is 5.07 a.m. And I think I should get some rest for the day. I don't know why I chose this out to record it, but since I did commit to it, but I'm going to continue with the second essay tomorrow. So continue watching.
it's a new day and time for a new essay. So I'm going to continue with the 100 word essay and the topic for which is why UBC, right? So I've explored my interest in business in school and through courses on financial markets from Yale. Whereas my research papers on greenwashing as an economic issue and the steel industry in India and my startup Chale Jaivik have provided me with the practical understanding of business. I now look forward to studying business at UBC through courses on commerce and gaining a better understanding of the economic problems in developing countries under faculty like Professor Black, who's researched on credit expansion and misallocation. Further, the Vancouver Student Entrepreneurship Association will allow me to pursue my interest in entrepreneurship. So few things to keep in mind. Your why any essay is not going to be this short. It's very unlikely for any why essay to be just 100 words. So it's usually 250 to 350 words. Irregardless, however long it may be, I would really advise you all to formulate a template which you will use for all your why essays. Now this template should look like something where you're first talking about your achievements and what you are bringing to the table and why a particular college should be admitting you and then go on to talk about how that particular university's curriculum is tailored according to your needs, right? So for instance, in my first paragraph, I've spoken about my achievements. So I've spoken about the financial markets course that I did from Yale, my two research papers and my startup. So over here, I'm talking about how these three activities that I have done have piqued my interest in business and now how I would like to take this interest forward at UBC and their curriculum in terms of the courses that they provide and the faculty that they have. They can really help me garner this skill and really help me you know take it up later now when you're talking about how a university can help you there are a few things to keep in mind always always research about their faculty so you can just google for instance since we're talking about ubc we can just go google google ubc faculty and you'll get a list of professors from different faculties click on a professor who is teaching in the faculty you want to be admitted into and see if he's working on some projects or if they're working on a research paper that you want to help them with talk about that that really shows a that you're really interested in that college and b that you're really good at research that's again something that colleges really want to look at in every single candidate so I think that is it for the essays. Now we're going to move on to the next, which is the activities that I had that I feel like got me the scholarship. Now, when you are expecting a great scholarship or being admitted into a really competitive university, you also need to understand that great grades are not enough. They're looking for students who have much more than that because they want diversity and they want to admit students because they look at every single applicant in a very holistic approach, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, what I try to highlight throughout my application were my achievements in squash. So when I was applying to university, I was ranked 20 nationally in squash right but however that was not enough now this is something that most people miss out on you also need to talk about the impact that you created while you were in that role so if i just spoke about okay i was nationally ranked 20 in squash that would not be enough because there were students who were even above me who did apply but still didn't end up getting a scholarship so how whichever activity you talk about do not miss out on the impact that you created while you were in that role so personally i spoke about how being a national level squash player i taught fit i conducted fitness workshops for the underprivileged wing in my school or uh, i was a team leader in a club so how I really spoke about my leadership skills of bringing the entire team together of motivating people when they weren't motivated. So you need to bring out as many skills as you can. I spoke about how I failed multiple times and then through perseverance and hard work, I really pulled through and got the rank that I did. So you don't just want to give them a quantitative figure. While that is important, you also need to fill it in with a lot of impact and the skills that you honed while you were in that leadership role. So do not miss out on that. And this applies for every single activity that you undertake. 
The second most highlighted activity that I spoke about was my microfinance scheme, where I spoke about how I assisted these destitute women who used to grind spices in their homes, but I provided them with a larger platform such as a farmer's market where they could come and boost their visibility and their income. Now, it may seem like a regular volunteering experience, but again, it's all about the impact that you create for every single activity. So whenever you're talking about impact, try to categorize it under quantitative and qualitative so under the quantitative impact I just spoke about how by how much percentage was uh, the income increased after this microfinance scheme and under the qualitative I spoke about how they increased the range of their spices their quality was increased they got more exposure and their standard of living increased I think just squash and the microfinance scheme comprised of 75% of my entire application However, I'm just going to skim through my entire resume so that you all also get an idea of what the remaining 25% comprised of and how that can too change the entire ball game, right? So under education, I had my school grades, which were usually always above 90%. I had my IELTS, which was an 8 or 9. I had my SAT and I took part in Spell B, so I also had my Spell B rank. I have mentioned my online courses and my research papers under the education subheading. A lot of people ask me what is the ideal number of research papers that you should write and I feel like there is no right answer to it. It's always quality over quantity. If you have spent a lot of time formulating one research paper and you've done that in great depth and you've spent months doing it that is far more important and that holds much more weightage than doing five research papers but really superficially or just for the sake of your resume right so do it well even if you do fewer number of research papers then I, under work experiences i had three internships speak about impact under every single one of them you don't just want to write interned at this company you want to write if you increase the sales by seven percent or maybe employee retention rate how did you change that any small number but try to show quantitative and qualitative impact then under leadership experiences i spoke about how i was the vice captain of the greenhouse in school how i took part in the business and the nature clubs in school and um, my certificates have been mentioned here because they were leadership related certificates i spoke about my squash achievements here and uh, i was a team leader at open house in a student ambassador program and i've also mentioned my microfinance scheme under leadership because i felt like it is showing more of my leadership skills than my volunteering skills so i didn't put it under community service right under community service i have mentioned my crowdfunding campaign again please do not miss out on quantitative and qualitative impact right so under the crowdfunding campaign i have mentioned how i raised enough money to fund 60 families so you have the quantitative side of it and the qualitative it's very similar to the microfinance scheme raising their income increasing their standard of living providing them with enough food so that they survive because this was in the lockdown period in India where people couldn't even get groceries, right? Then I've spoken about my fitness workshop. Um, I volunteered at two to three NGOs. I've written about those, but please do not just write that you've volunteered at NGOs because they don't really have any value impact 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 right then i've also spoken about some campaigns that i did from school like planting trees or no horn and water conservation drives and then lastly activities and skills i think this is something that's really downplayed or not really paid attention to in your entire resume and your application but you need to realize that this is a section through which the admission officers are really going to get to see who you are as a person and your personality is highlighted in this section so don't take it lightly try to show who you are when you're talking about your interests and your skills and your hobbies don't try to just put out hobbies and skills out there that you feel will impress colleges try to be as honest and try to show what your USP is and what helps you stand out from the other candidates. So under my activities and skills, I have mentioned some inter-school competitions, jam, ham, all of that. 
I was the editor-in-chief and the co-author of a book called These Kids Can Write Volume 2. So I mentioned that and um, I have written my skills like Microsoft Office, Canva, my interests include coffee. So I have a coffee page on Instagram. Check that out if you have time. It's called Coffee with Nishtha. I've mentioned how I've trekked along many uh, <laughs> ranges of mountains. Is it called ranges? Of, I don't even... I've just trekked and uh, my I had held an art exhibition displaying all my artworks so I mentioned that under my interests and uh, languages is something again which is not spoken about a lot but lang try to be as fluent in as many languages as you can or try to learn languages because that really shows that you are a global citizen and that can really impress admission officers. And with that, we come to the end of the video. Thank you for all of you who have stayed till the end. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I did not apply for financial aid. All these scholarships were merit based. But if you are someone who is applying through financial aid, please feel free to comment any of your queries in the comments below. And I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. And till then, see you. Thank you so much for watching.